Welcome to A to Z Nursing Blogs. Here we have another video on the HFMD which is nothing other than the hand, foot and mouth disease. Let's dive into the video. To introduce the topic, hand, foot and mouth disease or HFMD is a common viral infection that is common in young children under the age of 10. Teens and adults can seldom acquire this infection. HFMD is caused by Coxsackie virus A16 and Enterovirus A71. It usually occurs in the summer and early fall. HFMD is usually not serious. Regular hand washing and withdrawing close contact with people who are infected with hand, foot and mouth disease may help reduce the risk of infection. What is hand, foot and mouth disease? Hand, foot and mouth disease is an acute viral illness that presents as a vesicular eruption in the mouth but, can, but it can also involve the hands, feet, buttocks and or genitalia. Coxsackie virus A type 16 is the etiologic agent involved in most of the cases but the illness is also associated with the Coxsackie virus types A5, A7, A9, A10, B2 and B5 strains too. Enterovirus 71 has also caused outbreaks of this disease with associated neurologic involvements in the Western Pacific region. HFMD is often confused with foot and mouth disease, which is also called as hoof and mouth disease, which affects the cow, sheep and pigs. The illness is usually not serious, but it is very contagious. It spreads quickly at schools and daycare centers. The pathophysiology of this disease Infection generally occurs via the fecal oral route or via the contact with skin lesions and oral secretions. Viremia develops, followed by invasion of the skin and mucous membranes. Widespread apoptopsis likely results in the characteristic lesion form. The causes of the hand, foot and mouth disease is mainly because of Coxsackie virus A16 which is typically a most important or common cause of this disease in United States. Other Coxsackie viruses can also cause uh, the illness. Coxsackie virus A6 can also cause HFMD and the symptoms may be more severe. Enterovirus EV A71 has been associated with cases and outbreaks in East and Southeast Asia. Although a very rare EVA71 has been associated with more severe diseases such as encephalitis. The transmission of the disease usually takes place by breathing air after a sick person coughs or sneezes, touching a sick person or making other close contacts like kissing, hugging, touching a sick person's feces such as changing diapers, then touching your eyes, nose or mouth, touching objects and surfaces that have the virus on them like doorknobs, toys, touching your eyes, nose or mouth. The clinical manifestations of this disease. Most children have mild symptoms for 7 to 10 days. Children often get a fever and other flu-like symptoms 3 to 6 days. Mouth sores occur 1 or 2 days after the fever starts. And skin rashes are common. And fluid in the blister and the scab that forms as the blister heals may contain the virus that causes hand, foot and mouth disease. So the patient may get a skin rash on the palms of the skin and soles of the feet. It may also show up on the knees, elbows, buttocks, genital area. The rash usually looks like flat red spots, sometimes with the blisters. Assessment and Diagnostic Findings The diagnosis of hand, foot and mouth disease is typically based on the clinical grounds. Laboratory studies are usually unnecessary. Although a culture and a serological testing is done, the virus can be isolated and identified via culture and immunoassay from 
subcutaneous lesions, mucosal lesions or stool samples. In patients with vesicles, the vesicle stabs are also a good source for viral collection. The serological testing may be obtained in the case of acute and convalescent antibody levels. Medical management. There is no specific medical treatment for hand, foot and mouth disease. In order to relieve the fever and pain, over-the-counter medications can be taken. To prevent hydration, drink enough liquids, mouth sores can make it more painful to swallow. So the patient may not want to drink much, but make sure they drink enough to stay hydrated. Pharmacological management. Antipyretics or analgesics topical anesthetics, antihistamines. These are the main medicines that are used. Nursing management. Nursing management starts with the nursing assessment. The nursing assessment of a patient with HFMD may include history collection. The incubation period of hand, foot and mouth disease lasts approximately one week. Patients then report a sore mouth or throat. Malaise may develop. Rarely vomiting occurs in this case which is caused by EV71. It is followed by a, a good physical examination. Initially, macular lesions appear on the buccal mucosa, tongue and or the heart plate. These mucosal lesions rapidly progress to vesicles that erode and become surrounded by an erythematous halo. It is followed by the nursing diagnosis. Based on the assessment data, the major nursing diagnosis for a patient with HFMD are Impaired oral mucous membrane related to dehydration and mouth sores. Imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirements related to decrease in appetite due to painful mouth sores. Impaired skin integrity related to skin lesions on hands and feet. Risk for infection related to decrease in immunity. And acute pain related to painful mouth sores. The nursing care planning and goals are based on to improve the integrity of the skin and mucous membranes, to improve the nutritional intake, to prevent infection, to relieve the... Here comes the nursing interventions. To improve the condition of the oral mucous membranes, the nurse can plan and implement a meticulous mouth care regimen after each meal, regularly and every four hours while awake. Provide systemic and topical analgesics as prescribed. Serve food and fluids lukewarm or cold. Serve frequent small meals or snacks spaced throughout the day. Encourage soft foods, for example, mashed potatoes, puddings, custards and creamy cereals. Encourage the use of straw. To improve the skin integrity, monitor the status of skin around the wound Monitor patient skin care practices, noting the type of soap or other cleansing agents used, temperature of water and frequency of skin cleansing. Tell the patients and folks to avoid rubbing and scratching. Provide gloves or clip the nails if necessary. To improve the nutritional intake, nurse has to ascertain healthy body weight for age and height. Refer to a dietitian for complete nutrition assessment and methods for nutritional support. Provide a pleasant environment. Provide good oral hygiene and dentition. Consider six small nutrient dense meals instead of three larger meals daily to lessen the feeling of fullness. To prevent infection, the nurse has to wash hands before and after contact with patients and teach the patients about hand washing in frequent in between the procedures. Encourage intake of protein-rich and calorie-rich foods. Encourage fluid intake of 2000 to 3000 ml of water per day unless contraindicated. Recommend the use of soft bristle toothbrushes to protect mucous membranes. To relieve pain, the nurse can provide rest periods to promote relief, sleep and relaxation. Get rid of additional stresses or sources of discomfort whenever possible. Determine the appropriate pain relief method.
evaluation. Goals are met as evidenced by improved integrity of the skin and mucous membranes, improved nutritional intake, prevention of infection and relief from pain. Thanks for watching. If the contents of this video are informative to you, please like the video, share it with your friends, subscribe the channel and click on the bell icon for more videos and updates. Thank you.